Well, this week marks one year since the deadly Taliban attack on Camp Bastion in Afghanistan. It left two U.S. Marines dead and a dozen others hurt and cost America hundreds of millions in destroyed military hardware. And now columnist Michelle Malkin is raising some new questions about what exactly happened that day when 15 Taliban fighters dressed in American fatigues stormed the compound, armed with assault rifles and rocket-propelled grenades. She is a Fox News contributor, and Michelle joins us now live. Michelle, welcome. Uh, you know, I, I think when people talk about remembering something this week, your mind goes immediately, of course, to September 11th, and then perhaps to Benghazi. Uh, but this is an attack that you have been very committed to shedding light on, uh, and it happened just a couple of days after what happened in Libya. Yeah, that's right, three days after 9-11 last year. 15 of these Taliban infiltrators somehow got a hold of American combat fatigues and were able to conduct a, a devastating raid that took the lives of two American heroes, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Rabel and Sergeant Bradley Atwell. They were part of a contingent of Marines who really were on the front lines. They'd been completely surprised and unprepared. They had limited weaponry on them, no body armor, and somehow were uh, able able to mount a, a defense. And uh, this past Labor Day weekend, there were four other Marines who were involved in, in defending the base there, which is a joint-run NATO base with Britain and uh, adjoins our Camp Leatherneck for our Marines. And they were awarded Purple Hearts. And for some reason, it was buried on the holiday. And I believe that a lot of the, the families feel this way as well, that this news has been buried for the last year. And we can't forget what happened there because it certainly does have implications when we may be prepared uh, to send more American soldiers overseas. A lot of these families remind me, and I've been talking with them for a year as they fought for the truth, that there really is no such thing as, quote, no boots mm. on the ground. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, what is their theory, and I know that you've written about this, about why mm. these Marines were caught off guard? What happened to their security? Right. Well, a lot of the families had been hearing on the ground there that there were decisions made by military leaders. And remember, this is at a time when we were withdrawing and drawing down our forces in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. that, in fact, uh, the security around the perimeter there had been outsourced to Tongans, who had been widely known to be asleep on the job. And it, as a result of the pressure that these families brought to bear uh, on the Pentagon and on the leaders there, and really they were all alone in this fight with uh, a few people on Capitol Hill helping out and a few people in the media calling attention to it. A CENTCOM probe was launched earlier this year and apparently it is done now and they're just waiting to brief members of Capitol Hill. My concern and I believe a, a lot of the family's concern is that there's been so much media oxygen sucked up by other stories that their plight has been forgotten and we can't yeah. do that. Not for all of these people who put their lives on the line and sacrifice so much. And obviously you know it raises the sense question, Michelle, about putting troops on the ground and then the commitment to those troops, the follow-up, the security, uh, you know, and when things go wrong, as they did here and as they did in Benghazi, the sort of, you know, what appears to be a, a rush to, to not talk about it, to, you know, kind of put it to sleep. Uh, and it does raise questions about Syria as well, especially when you consider the fact that the president has, you know, in many ways been reluctant uh, to go forward with this. And then on the other hand, is trying to, to sell it uh, big time. So th there's a lot of uh, you know, incongruence is there. No question about it, Martha. And, and uh, one thing to remind people about with this particular case at Camp Bastion is that six months before this raid took place, there was an attempt by a jihadi on Leon Panetta's life. And after that, again, there was this cover-up, this hush-up. Nobody wants to talk about uh, jihad and, and what's needed to defend against it, not only here at home, but certainly overseas. Uh, you, 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 you know that we here at Fox News have uh, covered a lot of questions that military families have about rules of engagement and concerns that their soldiers are fighting with uh, their uh, hands tied behind their back. What kind of support are they getting from their military leaders? And the fact that in both the cases of Benghazi and Bastion, that there had been many warning signs and red, red flags beforehand and that they had been ignored calls into question the commitment of both military and civilian leaders to protect 
protecting this country. Yeah. Boy, you can just imagine uh, how that feels uh, to be out there and to be on those lines and to feel that you don't have the backup that you need. It's got to be an extremely frightening feeling that those people at uh, Camp Bastion felt. Uh, thank you for keeping this in the limelight and for bringing it to us today, Michelle. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Take care.